we haven't been able to do. And number two, to create a new stock of modern housing in an area that just suffers with older housing. Um, the Terrapin Run development is the private investment avenue that has the best opportunity to cause that growth and development and to draw it from the eastern direction, which is where many people, including myself, believe development will have to come. So on that basis, um, I urge the board's adoption of the 2018 amendments. Hopefully you'll go forward with it immediately and hopefully consider it for adoption tonight. Great. Thank you. Are there any more comments on the amendments? Mr. Wilmot. This chapter of mine, we've been on that for years. Uh, we certainly, how many years, Mr. Pay? 13. Okay. Number one, we don't need that huge development. Number, number two, the same with this Landhurst development. Who's going who's gonna to buy houses? There's nobody in Allegheny County working hardly. Most of the people have got their own welfare. I mean, it don't make sense to put something in. Next thing is, how are we going to get water to those people? How are we going to, all the EMS emergencies, law enforcement, fire department, that's not taken in consideration. We don't need that. I spoke against it when it first came up, and I'll speak against it again. We need to save our forests. We need to save our trees like out of drawings. Uh, I mean, half of Cumberland is empty. Same, I can take you out through the county, and I can show you some really bad sites out through the <coughs> county. People just, I mean, we don't need all, all those houses that they say we need. If, uh, what we need is a factory or jobs that put some money in people's pocket. Until that time comes, I think we should forget about developing, putting in houses for nothing. That's my sentiment, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, the good news is that the commissioners aren't putting in houses. It's private developers that are moving right. forward with that. Sir, can, is it possible we could take action on this tonight? Mm -hmm. I believe we can. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. On favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's Thank you. the amendments to the 16 water and sewer plan. Thank you, Sierra. And I'll package it up and send it off to MDE for their approval. Great. Thank you. Thank Good you, luck. Sarah. Okay. This whole agenda is like the never-ending projects. I mean, we got Terrapin Run. We got we got some pillars coming up here. <laughs> Item number six, Mr. Adam Patterson. What? It, it, this is, it only feels like 13 years. It's not. <laughs> well, it's more than that. How old is the library? Yeah, how old are those, those pillars? Those pillars have been peeling the bugs on you. How old is the pillars, Bill? What what is since this is an unfunded funded mandate that I don't understand why we have to pass when we're told what happens if we don't pass it? We are held to the held yeah. held to the mandate no matter. What. So then why put it here for us to vote on something that we actually have no control over? It's actually something that uh, unfortunately is is something that we are we as well as every employer in this county and in the state uh, must uh, unfortunately must comply with. And must must implement. So it's to change the rules and regs is what you're putting yeah. right. on. <laughs> maybe we can send a letter to the uh, leaders of the General Assembly, letting them know. Maybe we'll send them an invoice or something. Well, I'll save a bunch of time because I won't make the motion seconded or vote in favor of it. So there, there we go. So <laughs> well, well um, then. Uh, <laughs> In, in, in terms of uh, trying to comply with Maryland state law, I will uh, make the motion. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Not really in favor, but aye. Okay. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Mark that as two to one. Thanks, Pam. Item number nine is the Cumberland Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. Sierra. Anyway, um, so the Cumberland Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, which coordinates transportation planning and uh, in Allegheny County, 
um, was uh, designated by Governor Harry Hughes in 1982. Uh, we had MOUs working with the state, but we never had a set of bylaws. Um, so we were asked to draft some, so the MPO staff worked on crafting them. We met with the Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, they had some comments. We've incorporated comments, I've put it by Bill and also by MDOT's attorneys, and I'm hoping today that you, the MPO board, would adopt our CAMPO bylaws. And these have been reviewed. Um, is there any discussion? <coughs> is, there, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank okay, you. thanks, Sarah. Right. Moving to our consent agenda, Mr. Butler. Commissioners, we have four items on the consent agenda. The item number 10 is a appointment of Carl Robinette to the Agricultural Land Preservation Board. Uh, that term is, his term would then expire after five years. Item number 11 is the authorization to, uh, to have the uh, Department of Public Works advertised for bids for a new Western Correctional Training co uh, Center at Allegheny College of Maryland. <laughs> Item number 12 is a declaration of surplus vehicles. It is the surplusing of an international transit bus, uh, and that is to surplus and dispose according to county policy. And finally, again, this, uh, this week, item number 13 is a declaration of various abandoned vehicles as listed in the agenda. And you're not going to read them. And I'm not going to read them this time, although I will say I have a deal for you. Well, there's, a, there's an 86 and 87 Chevy Monte Carlo. That's right. You could get two for, for your driveway. <laughs> Go for your backyard. <laughs> Like Bill, do you have things. a motion for this? So move. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Butler, any comments? None for me, Commissioners. Attorney, I almost said Commissioner Rudd. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the only thing I would comment, just semi personally, I attended a memorial service for uh, Judge James Getty down at before the Court of Special Appeals on Tuesday. He was very impressive. Uh, most of the judges from Allegheny County, all the George judges, Court of Special Appeals, Judge Fred Scher, who's retired from both the Circuit Court and the Court of Special Appeals, as well as uh, Greg Getty, Judge Getty's uh, son, presented to the court. Um, it was very impressive. Of course, there was a lot of stories about Judge Getty. One I've told several people here, but I thought it was appropriate. If you knew Judge Getty, who was, first of all, a very impressive guy. When I started practicing, he was a Circuit Court judge. But uh, he was down in his later years. In fact, at age 90, he was the oldest judge to ever preside at a court of special appeals case, or appellate case, actually, in the state of Maryland. But they, he was down in later years, and a fellow was presenting his case and talking about what's called contributory negligence in the slip and fall case. And uh, he said that the plaintiff should not have recovered because um, he was wearing a high heel cowboy boots. And Judge Getty leaned back and put his foot up and said, high heel cowboy boots. Didn't have to say a word. And of course, one of the judges who had sat with him on that panel said, I wasn't so much impressed with his boots by the fact that he could get his leg up. <laughs> so anyway, that kind of told you about Judge Getty, and there's a lot of other stories, but it was Allegheny County was well represented, and uh, so it was, uh, though he a solid, look at him, guy dies at 96, it's, it's, it's a life well lived. So it was a celebration of his judicial career, which went from about the 1960s to really when he died. So long time. Thank you, Mr. Rudd. Yep. Commissioner Valentine. Uh, just a few things. Uh, as Jake said earlier, this wasn't totally a bad year for us in Annapolis. We got a lot of things through with Mr. Buckles' bill. Um, also, you've heard us complain about the loss of highway user revenue uh, year after year. And, you know, that was a deal where Governor O'Malley raised the gasoline tax, tied it to the consumer price index, which means that gasoline tax is going to go up and up and up, and he did this to get more money in the Transportation Trust Fund. Then he turned around and took all the highway user funds from all the counties, took 90 percent of it. Uh, through MACO, we've been fighting this ever since that happened, and uh, since Governor Hogan was in office, Governor Hogan would put a return of highways funds in his budget, and then the legislature would pull it out. So this year, um, MACO took the step of we actually wrote our own piece of legislation. Uh, we got together with MML, 
uh, since the municipalities had lost a lot of their funding too. And between the two groups, we were able to get that funding through. Uh, now it only takes us back to less than 20% of what we, we were getting years ago, but step in the right direction. And this piece of legislation guarantees that funding for five years because we did want to get an increase this year and then the legislatures take it all away next year and in the following year. So that was something that, uh, that MACO was able to get through that's good for Allegheny County. And another bill that MACO actually wrote and found people to sponsor with 911 systems, uh, with new technologies, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work with our 911 systems that we need to get in there. And so uh, MACO put together what they call a next generation 911 bill. And what the state is going to do is they will foot the bill to upgrade 911 systems. Uh, <coughs> it'll allow people with cell phones to text a problem at 911. And basically, you know, you've got a lot of all automobiles that will automatically send out a distress signal doesn't work with the existing 911 system. So this will take care of that. So it's going to move our 911 into, uh, into the 21st century uh, at the state's expense, the way it looks right now. Uh, the other good thing is, you know, I serve on Kerwin Commission. And it started out was, as just three of us out of a group of 25 started pushing for uh, strengthening uh, career training through such entities as our career center. Uh, we fought hard, we fought long, and so basically uh, Kerwin Commission made a recommendation, passed legislation this year. Uh, this year there was an extra $2 million available uh, through career training. And after a meeting that um, uh, Mr. Butler and I had just, just this week, it's perfect timing for Allegheny County was something we're looking at. Uh, those, I found out today uh, that that has been signed. It will go into effect in July, but they really, they're not going to be ready to roll it out for another couple months. But uh, I think we need to make contact July 1st and say, hey, we're ready. Great. Commissioner Brady. I'm going to keep this short because I'll train of thought there kind of left when we started talking about these unfunded mandates that always does burn me up. First of all, thanks to Senator and our three good delegates for a, a job well done. It, and I always like to remind the people here that it's not our delegation from Western Maryland or the Eastern Shore that shoves this junk down our throat. It's essentially four counties that, it, that try to produce something where there, something can't produce. You, you can't put the will in someone to work. And what we're trying to do is make the people who don't want to work, not have to work. And if they do stumble their way in, they want to reward them immensely instead of letting the people learn to better their self on their own. Uh, with that being said, though, I do thank them for the ATV bill that we did get past the gentleman. Uh, Mr. Butler, if, as soon as we can, we'd like to get something going on that because I'm sure we're going to have to do a, a code home rule bill yep. so we can get it. Uh, into law when the states take effect October 1st, so we'll get working with the sheriff on that, and we'll get that ruled out for public hearing and comment and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, And if I could, Craig, I, I know this is your bill. One thing I think maybe we should look at, too, instead of all inspections have to be done through the sheriff's department, I think it, it would be good if dealers of ATVs upon the sale of a new ATV, you know it's going to pass inspection, if they could go ahead and add the sticker at that time if people wanted it for highway use. That would keep you from having to buy a new ATV and then taking it to Sheriff's Department to have it inspected when we already know that. We ought to be able to look should, into that. I, I want to see exactly what Garrett County is doing though, right. so that we can yeah. stay on board with them since Garrett County and Allegheny County is essentially going to share the, mm -hmm. the, the same regs and the same sticker and both county will recognize each other. So, But not a bad well, idea. We could even mm -hmm. suggest that to Garrett. <laughs> So, yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, I, I'll just add, Pam, Jason, Bennett, very good job. You know, how many times can you get additional benefits in your health insurance coverage, adding dental by keeping costs the same? I mean, that, that is just unheard of, especially today. So thank you all for keeping those costs low. I know we're, uh, 
we're certainly a leader compared to other local entities when it comes to cost. That's putting it nicely. Um, and, and again, the Maryland Sick and Safe Leave Act, all it does is is reduces the flexibility of what employers can do. You know, as a government entity, um, fifty thousand dollars is is we'll take that hit. But if you're a small business, that's coming out of your bottom line. That's something that you're not going to be able to pay. And so, make forcing businesses to provide that to part time employees is is going to be a burden, and it's yeah. going to make us less competitive with other states that don't have to provide that. So. Again, it's it, it's well intentioned, but as everything, it has real world world consequences that we saw here tonight. It actually comes up to about thirty days that yeah. somebody can take off and get full payment. If you got a small business with only two or three employees, you've lost twenty five, thirty, forty, fifty percent of your workforce. Yeah, and you're paying for it. Absolutely. All right, we only have two people signed up tonight. First, we have Mr. Danny Williams. Good evening. Sir. Most people that sign that come up here to say something. Pretty much come up here to give you hell about something. I just wanted to bring you a heartfelt thanks. I met with <clears throat> Mr. John McMillan this afternoon, the man who's in charge of working on the bridge that you guys and Adam and Paul made possible. Uh, they were getting ready to weld the... Uh, tire bumpers back on the side of it, so if you're plowing, you don't get into the good guardrails that catches the tires. I said, like training wheels for truck drivers, and he said, yeah. But uh, tomorrow afternoon when they leave, that bridge is done, finished, and open for traffic. And uh, from the folks up there, and especially the fire hall, just thank you. Great. And give McMillan a real pat on the back, because he did a hellacious job on this. And that gang he works with, Phenomenal just to go down and, and watch them and be there with them. But thank you for getting it done. <laughs> thank you, Danny. Thank you, because we appreciate John McMillan it. is actually our, our bridge crew foreman. Yeah, and right. He does a fantastic he job. Is. So I'm sure, Pup, I mean, Adam will want to pass that yeah. along. He, he is awesome to, to go. You know, Mike and George both just retired from Rhodes Department. The three of us, it's okay. Let's go get a coffee and see how the boys are doing. Yeah. And it's awesome just to watch him. He doesn't go down and say, this is what I want you to do. He goes down and says, guys, this is how we're going to do this. What do you think about what we're doing here? Should we do this? Should we do that? Whatever. And then he's the first one to grab the gloves and get in there and work with them. And that crew put out, puts out for him that they appreciate their boss and they do a tremendous job. But thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Danny. Next up, we have Mr. Kenneth Wilmot. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'm Kenneth Wilmot. I live at 513 Florida Avenue. Uh, at the age of 82, I've probably seen it all, did it all, been around the world about three or four times. But I always, in my whole life, I always look at everything with a grain of salt. Do I need it? And it should apply to our government. And it's like this Terrapin Run thing. It's been going on for 13 years. That's proof positive that we don't need it. If we can get along for 13 years without 4,000 acres out there being timbered and whatever, putting it, it's going to put a heck of a burden on, on the county and the taxpayers, to, you know, to keep that thing up. And uh, I, would, I would just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't okay it. And the same out in, in Bel Air. The whole city's... Half the city's empty. We don't need no development out there. Leave it be. Uh, my goodness gracious, it, why build houses just to sit there? I mean, look at it. It is 13 years, and no people downstate, they, they got brains too, you know? They can see that they, up here there's no jobs, no, there's nothing going for us. And our, our population is going down. We, what we need is some thought on some factories to put in here that puts money in people's pocket instead of taking it out. It's like this thing here, this amendment. You can work 30 weeks. Part-time people have got to get paid for their vacation. 
man, that's going to put a lot of these little guys out of business. I mean, I mean, I know some restaurants, they're getting by. But, you know, when we put an added burden on, but they got no choice but just increase the price on everything to, to, to pay for this guy to have a vacation. Thank you. That's all I got to say. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wilmot. Okay, our next public business meeting will be Thursday, May 10th, 5 o'clock. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Well, there you go. I'm hired in 15 minutes. Well, that's been our longest time. <laughs>